Okay, this is a this is a five bar Western Electric old telephone crank type telephone. Okay, what well, we've done in the in the years we've developed a, a process with this thing here. We rigged it up with electric motor on it, electric motor, and we have a a rheostat wire. That goes to the battery, and the way you s slow this machine up and down is with a rheostat wire. Uh, and it works like this. Now to control your catfish, You've got to speed or slow up your generator. And the way you do that is with a rheostat wire. That you smooth it, you run it up and down. The closer your battery get, of course, the faster the machine's gonna run. But if you get it too hot, your catfish are go, they'll go crazy and you can't catch them. So you, there's, a, there's a, a happy medium there somewhere. You got to uh, get this wire just about right and the way you do that is you run your hand down your wire in the water and feel the current. And yeah, after you, right, wait a minute, and your and your arm tenses up, right? When when you're be, you're being right when you, electrocuted, you, right? You can feel your muscles. I mean, there's a tr trick to doing this, but if you don't get it just right, your catfish will be too rambunctious and you won't be able to catch very many of them. But you don't want to pull your hand up the wire out of the water because I like to got killed one time, I guess, after doing that. <laughs> a wave hit the boat and my hand come up and I uh, stood there for about a minute and a half or two minutes getting electrocuted. <laughs> so, well, how did you get out of it? Well, I, could bend, I couldn't bend my hands and arms, but I could bend at the waist. And when I figured that out, I bent my, when my hand went back in the water, why well, it released me. And so how did you how did you recuperate from that? Well, I drank about three or four Budweiser's, <laughs> and about two hours later, I was back to normal. <laughs> and the, this wire, it goes one out the front of the boat and one out the back of the boat. And uh, of course, you rig them up in your boat, and if the man comes, and you you have to throw it overboard. You got your wires all rigged and you throw your machine and the wires go with it, pulls through the eyelets. I had eyelets on my boat where the wire would come right back out through them. And hopefully that it goes in the mud and the man don't get a hold of it. Because <laughs> if he does, you got to trip down and talk to the judge. <laughs> now where did you, where did you order these magnetos? Well, I got an old, an old advertisement. I am, antique telephone and telegraph this has been years ago and they had plenty of them so naturally i ordered six eight ten of them and put them together and i'd hide them in these machine gun boxes all up and down the st john's river i said one thing you don't want to do you don't want to come back to the boat ramp with no monkey machine in your boat but me being a commercial fisherman i had commercial fishing license and everything when i come to the boat i was legal back to the boat ramp so that's so did you, when you hid these machines, where did you, did you hide them at a certain lamp? How, how did you know where to hide them? Did you just, did you well, select the Well, I'd set them or? over back of a stump or in a clump of bushes or something like that. And my favorite place to hide one one time, I had a, a big cypress tree and it had a split in the back side of it. And I'd walk up there and just set my can in it and go on about my business. But. One day I went there to the can and I run my hand in there and there was a dead gum moccasin on top of my can. So I, I used a little more precaution. After that, I run me a stick in there and flopped it around trying to get the snake all run out of it. How many times have you been snake bit? I've been snake bit two times. Once a cotton mouth and one a ground rattler. The cotton mouth, you don't want to get bit by a cotton mouth, I'll tell you. Now, you, you didn't, did, how, how long before you started wearing shoes? When did you start wearing shoes? Oh, <laughs> it's been a pretty good, pretty good while now. I guess I hunted and fished with barefoot for oh, till I was about 34 to 35, 40 years old, about 45, 50, something like that.
Skipjack, just like you seen out there a while ago, we probably had, I guess, five, six, seven hundred pounds of fish in it. And we're coming out of the Wekava, the man was waiting on us, so called. <laughs> and uh, we lit out. We ran from the Wekava. He couldn't catch us and we couldn't leave him. So I throwed catfish overboard with my bare hands for about a half hour, I guess, or 30 minutes to try to light, lighten up the boat. And uh, we run all the way from the Wekava through pilings and under docks and didn't you, run you name a, it. Didn't you run through a burnt dock or a burnt house? Well, we went through an old boathouse that had fat lighter post in it. And we, we bent, hit, hit the propeller, bent, bent it a little bit and we had a little vibration. But we come out of the mouth, out of the lower river down there coming from the Wekava. We uh, come in the big Lake George, of course. And when I look back, I seen the man go back down in the water, which he quit us, which was good. So I, his about light, the next, said, his light went into the water. I mean, yeah, his light went light. down. So I know the man had, had quit us. I was watching every now and then. All right, and about the next, I guess, 30 seconds, we run high and dry on a, a shiner lift. And I had to jump overboard and get us wiggle back off. But the man had quit us. We was in the clear. Well, what and happened to the other guy's face when you went through the shiner lift? Went now? through the shiner lift. Uh, we cut his eye open up there and a big knot on top of his head. And I had to take him to the doctor and get his eye closed back up. But after we got back off the mud, we was in good shape. We went on to Spencer's fish house and the chase was over. And my fishing with that man was over too. Because I, I didn't go with him no that young more. But I guess you can look back and say, well, them was the good old days. <laughs> Maybe.